we had some gremlins in the system so i think the power kind of got knocked out a little bit there and it took the internet down with it and so we got cut off so i do apologize good morning if you've just started watching this one and you hadn't watched the other one we're live in the carnation crafts tv studios and we are here with some special edition vignettes bear with me one second miss Taz. please can i have the monitor sorry guys um so everything got cut and uh, yes, that was a very exciting little moment in my day. We are back. So the special edition vignettes that we have got are for the deal of the day. I'm going to kind of go through it again in case anybody is joining us for brand new and missed the last one. So they don't know where everything is. I'm just going to make sure I've got you guys here uh, and mine is playing up. So. The special edition vignettes are on the Carnation Crafts website, which is www.carnationcrafts.co.uk. The deal of the day is always situated in the middle of the page at the top in bright red letters. And that's where we're going to go and find these special edition vignettes. When you click there, you can see lots of things going through and there's loads of ways of doing it um, and getting everything that you need from there. But they've got other things on there, which is really important. So yes, these are all deals of the day. The main one ordered for today is the five pounds deal of the day, which you see at the top of the page. It should be 21 pounds and it's gonna go back to that. So you get in, is that right, Taz? you're getting this huge whacking amount off it. It's got 13 different colorways on there than we're normally used to having. And they come from in the courtyard and just passing by. So you might have those collections already. Um, so I'm just saying hello to you all here. I'm just looking at who has joined just to make sure we've caught you all back. I do apologize for the issues we had. Sometimes if the internet goes um, or the power goes, it cuts everything and unfortunately we had a gremlin. So in order to get these vignettes, you need to go to the website, order them there. The number to get it from is 222902. It is called Grand Garden Special Edition Vignette Download Collection. You just pop it into your basket, go through the checkout and it will download to your computer and it'll be a bunch of vignettes. The ones that you're getting on there are called, and these are the dies that correspond, warm welcome, attempted delivery, fine railings, topping trellis, right up your street, pillar box, the balcony, posing peacock, lasting light, cypress tree, grand grandeur, and the courtyard die shape, the card shape. And we'll go through all that because I'm going to do the courtyard card shape in one of the demos. Um, so yes, um, well, lots of you took that time to go and check out. So it kind of maybe went into people's favours. I don't know, but we lost it and we are back. So thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the finished examples, which is where we got to at the end. So these are all from our glorious, glorious DT team. Thank you so much for the work that you have put in. So the one we were looking at was this, and I'm focusing on this. Obviously, we've got colorways, new colorways for everything, but this to me is spectacular. These gorgeous reds that we've got, we've got the beautiful red of the door and all of these uh, sort of pieces of foliage that we've got as well, which can be used as a grounding device for grass. We have got both colors. You can see them there. Really, really pretty as it comes through. Works so beautifully with the backing papers and everything else that goes together. So you can see how we start pulling everything in and those colors working as they are. Look at this one. This is, look at the color on that. If that's not vibrant, I don't know what is. And the little <laughs> pussycat at the top there is just ridiculously sweet. So just to then pull all that together, that's how we cut that. Isn't that just glorious? And then we can obviously bring in elements like that that took over the top so that when the card closes, as we just did, the cat still sits there. It's a double-sided vignette, so it doesn't matter which way it's closed. Perfect detailing, gorgeous colors, beautifully vibrant and completely different to the original. And that's important because if we're gonna get the new colorways, we want it to be completely different and it is. Look at these. You ready? that's not a card I don't know what is crazy card can you see it can you see all the depth that we're getting there how stunning is that how stunning is that folds down back out there's so much in that card is that not the most incredible thing 
who is that? That's, that's, is that? Yeah, it's a Janine. Janine, you are a genius, just beautiful. And you're gonna have these colorways. Five quid, reduced from 21 pounds. That is a bargain. Craft Avenue, just gorgeous. I love it that Carnation bring out new colorways means the dyes are not left on the shelf. It's a, it's a funny thing, isn't it? Because because we buy craft stuff and it's great and we use it and it's lovely to have and, and, and we, you know, it's very easy to put down a collection and then get the new one and kind of forget those old ones. Carnation, this is nothing Carnation have ever asked me to say. Um, but one of the things that I love the most about Carnation, bear, bear in mind that I'm a freelance, but one of the things I love about it is they're always like, we just want people to keep using the dies. We don't want it to be a one-off purchase because you just want to collect them all. We want you to use them. And so they constantly thinking of ways that you can bring back the dies that you've already bought. And so they redo all the colorways so that we can use them in a different way. And I think that's really important because it feels to me like I'm getting more value for my money because I can keep using them in different ways. So it's important to me. Um, Karen Vincent, Karen Vincent, let me have a word in your ear here. Wow, Janine, stunning card. I wish I could do that. Karen Vincent, you can do that. We are all crafters. Yes, you can. I'm going to be really annoying because the thing that Janine has used in this card, just here, can you see these tabs? Yeah? Where you've got that coming through. You see that? That is a die that Carnation had in one of the collections. And I can't remember which collection it was. And if anyone at Carnation is watching and you can just remind me because my brain is not giving me the info. But that piece that's done there, every layer that's done, that gives you that concertina effect that allows you to draw it back into that card, that is a specific piece of mechanism that Carnation made as a die so we can make these cards. Yes, absolutely you can make this card, Karen. And you can do it because you are a crafter, you have the skills, it's about taking it taking it back, go slow. What I'll say about this card particularly, because it is incredible, is when we open it up, what you're actually looking at here is essentially, let's call it one, two, three, four, five. Five cards because we're layering them. So of course you can make it. You can make one card, so you can make five, and you just clip them together. Yes, Miss Taz. Janine's just said it's from Just Passing By. Thank you, Janine, you are a wonderful human. It's from Just Passing By. That die is from Just Passing By. Janine's here, and Janine will tell you the same. The strata card shape, Karen, you guys are so brilliant, thank you. The strata card shape. If you can make, Janine will agree with me, if you can make one layer for a card, you can make five. There's nothing magic about this, and I'm not taking anything away from Janine because she's brilliant. We know she's brilliant. But of course you can make it. Of course you can. It's just five cards layered up to create one. Okay? So please don't ever think that somebody else's work is better than something you could do. That's never true. It's just different to how you might have thought of doing it in the first place. And that's why we have a DT team. It's to give you the inspiration so that your dies come to life. Think of that strata card shape and then don't think of it as being in the Just Passing By collection. How many other cards can you use this for? If it was for babies cards with bundles of joy, if it was for a crafty friend and using crafty little things, Bohemian Beauty, all of those collections that we've got, the bird on Bohemian Beauty, bringing these in, Nature in Motion with the eagle coming across one, you know, all the things that we, you know, not the eagle, sorry, the stag, and it had the um, owl. owl, all the, yeah, I knew there was a bird in there with feathers. I'm so good with plants and animals. If you can have those coming across, all of those ways that we can use layered cards, it's just the strata card shape, so yes, of course you can make it. You're all amazing. I've seen all of your cards in the groups. You know, there's nobody lacking in here. You don't make bad cards with Carnation anyway. Um, but you guys have got talent beyond. It's easy to think the DT team are gonna be more talented than us because they're the DT team. Listen, we're all crafters. Don't put yourselves down. Um, you've got this here where you've got your little gateway that opens, look. 
Craft Avenue. Those gorgeous trees coming down. I love those trees. I think they're gorgeous. Cypress trees are always kind of breathtaking, aren't they? Because you've got that, but that colorway is stunning. Those greens and those reds, it's so vibrant. And then this. Good morning, Luna Doodle. Look, are you ready? Oval. Using your oval dies, create those apertures. Just think outside the box a little bit. And also remember, as we sit here today, you are allowed to copy the DT team. So anything the DT team have made, you can copy. So you can make this. You can do exactly the same card. How stunning is that? Get those dies out, get those colorways looked at and think of the different ways that you yourself can craft to create some extra bits. They're just telling me for any of you that want the Strata card shape, it's 211035. Um, and you can go from there, obviously, and that's on the website, which is www.carnationcrafts.co.uk. The vignettes that we're talking about today are 222902. They're only five pounds today, and they should be 26. You're getting 21 pounds off these. So it's a huge deal today. These are the bits that we grab um, because they're a fiver. And Carnation like to do the shows for these because they know they're so cheap that, you know, they're taking 21 quid off. They know that. So they want to give you the best possible viewing of it. So when we're looking at the um, the dies for, uh, the, sorry, the vignettes for Carnation and the new colorways, this, for those of you who are brand new, this is what a vignette is. It's a piece of paper that's printed with the image on it. Now you'll notice that with Carnations, you've got a black line down the middle. Not always, but you have an option. So some will not have the black line, some do. But we always talk about this and I never have one in front of me to be able to show you. So I'll use that time now, just while I'm here. And I'll use this one as an example. And then we'll go through some of the other pieces that are in there. When you have this black line on the center, we don't ignore it. Yes, you can fold it in the middle, but it's not gonna be exact. What it means is this black line has these two images equidistant apart. So when I fold it, they're going to be exactly right when you put your die on it. And all we do is literally, you can use scissors to make it easier and just snip into either side a little bit and that will help it fold. I tend to just eyeball it, press down in the middle where I see that black line and just go across. And then I, you can see the black line still sort of outlining at the bottom and we just put it there. If then you open it and you spray glue the inside of that, obviously I would never do that in the studio, but you spray glue it and you stick the two together. And that means that is 240 GSM Pro Print paper. The reason it's so vibrant is because it is on Pro Print, it is gonna make a difference. I would then place my outside die on top of there or my die for whichever vignette I'm using and just pop it through my machine. And that's gonna give me a mirrored vignette, which is going to mean I've got the color on this side and I've got the color on that side. That means I've got loads of different ways of playing. That's carnation to a T and I like that they do that because it gives me loads of playway. Jacqueline says, I love the fact that if my budget does not stretch the first time around, I have a chance at a later time. Um, and then it feels like I've got better buys has got the, uh, twice the amount of colorways. Absolutely. It, and it, it's nice. I like the freedom. I, it's, it's important to me. Um, and I know it's important to some of you guys as well that we just get that expansion on what we're doing. And we always say with Carnation, it's one collection with bolt-ons. Everything is one collection. That's the whole point with Carnation. If I pick up before the rainbow, the first ever collection, I could absolutely add in this peacock that I've got sitting in front of me in a way that I can build those cards because everything is one collection. We just keep adding bolt-ons to that. So when they give us different colorways, that then gives us even more expansion. So we've got bolt-ons and we've got expansion packs and suddenly we're down with the kids. But that's exactly what Carnation do. So I'm just gonna very quickly run through some of these so you can see them. We've got the peacock, we've got the animals there. You've got the different colors for your brick walls. So we're building scenes, we're building, you know, towns. We've got those gorgeous labels for your sentiments there that you can type in yourself. Then you've got your beautiful uh, sort of fanning out elements that we use for corners. And you've got your, get those gates are just so rich, aren't they? You've got your gates. Look at that. That color is just, it's like a rich wine color. Your letterbox now in a different colorway as well. Still red, but with that different feel. 
I don't know if I've covered most of what I've got there. I think I probably have. And obviously you've got that front door that we were looking at at the beginning as well. So see how they come together so beautifully. That color door is all brought out in this peacock and in the feathers. The peaches that you get in here are also matched to the peach that we've got here. So it's not just perfect papers that are blended, it's your vignettes. It's not just one way or another, it's that everything goes together. So I hope that gives you a little bit insight of what you'll be getting when you start printing them out and how we can use them. So I'm gonna do a demo. I'll, the first one that I do will be my longest demo and then I'll do a, a couple of quick ones afterwards if we've got time. But let's start with this one. Oh, there's a lot of stuff. So this is your In the Courtyard card shape. Funny looking thing, isn't it? Um, but that is what it is. It looks like Dolly Parton's wig with long hair to me. That's all I can see when I see that little element of it there. It's Dolly Parton's hair, wig form. Not to the rest of you, I'm sure. What we do when we've got this is you've got some score marks there, fold it up onto itself, both sides, all right? And then simply turn it in. Now, when you're doing this at home, you're gonna stick those two panels together, potentially. I don't, because if I'm posting it, I want it to go back flat and lie down. But you can, if you're keeping it at home. Now, just gonna use the little score line there just to tweak that. When I stand that up, I've now got what is essentially a box. That gives me two options here, more so than normal. I can just decorate the inside of it and have that, but I also get to decorate the outside as well so that when the recipient receives it, you've got a 360. You can decorate all the way around, it's entirely up to you. But it stands perfectly as it is and it gives us this gorgeous, gorgeous shaping that all comes together into that beautiful courtyard shape. I can tell you sitting here right now that this is the first collection that Miss Taz ever cut because she cut it with me. Um, can you remember that Miss Taz? On yeah, that fateful day that. she did, she sat down and she learnt to die cut by cutting this collection. So she sat next to me and I taught her how to die cut and she cut out some bits and pieces for me then. So that is the main card shape. Then we've got elements that go on. Now I've already matted and layered these just to make it a little bit quicker but I've got my papers here. Oh, wrong way around. At least we know which way around they go because you can't get it wrong. So you've got the round section and you've got that squarer element there, okay? So Dolly's now dyed her hair green. How pretty is that? We're already coming together with those colors. We've got that richness, we've got the depth and we've got the brightness as well. So just using a bit of foam, foam tape. Now for these, I've used one mil foam tape. I've gone down and partly because I can get the backing off them because the yellow one is now hates me. So we're gonna put this down. Just as it is there, same again. You can do the tab theories when you're doing this, pull it halfway and get it into place, but I'm trying to get quicker so we can get as many demos in as we can and push that down. So that's the first bit. Now, because this card is gonna be placed inwards, I only want one piece on here. If I put mats and layers on here, it will sit, but it might be a little bit wobbly bobbly. So you're better off just putting it on one side. It doesn't matter which, it'll fold over either way. It, it, it Literally, it doesn't matter. But the point being is if I have mats and layers on this side too, it might just unbalance it. So I would only ever put it on one. It is entirely up to you. That's just the way I would do it. I've got some finger lift on here. I haven't used foam tape on this because I don't want to interfere with anything that is on top. I'm gonna try my best to get this off and just place it on. She says, oh. you know, tape is the bane of my life. There we go. That and the internet apparently. Right, I'm just gonna place this on. They make it easy, Carnation made it easy. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's four little sort of squarer points on here and that allows us to get those mats and layers in place without struggling as to where they're gonna go. Next to that, I've got this, which is this beautiful panel. Now, I'm pretty sure, if my memory serves me right, you can actually cut those into that. I'm sticking it on top, but you could cut them into it as well. Did you do that, Miss Taz? Miss Taz is nodding, she remembers. She's got a better memory than I do, so. 
place this wet glue on here. So this is the Carnation Everyday Glue. When we're using the Everyday Glue, it just gives us enough wiggle time. Remember, the Everyday Glue is fast drying. It has a very low water content in it, which is what we need, but it does mean we just work that little bit faster. Now, I'm only gonna place this on very specific points. These applicators are your best friend because I can get in. Can you see how I'm going into the tiniest areas here? And then I will just place some through. So I tend to just alternate which ang angles I'm putting it on so I know that it will stick the whole way down. But I don't put it everywhere. It doesn't need it. Once it's in place, it's in place. Let me see what I'm doing there. So that can go across there. And then I'm just, I always start with the bottom, get it into place, get it lined up. Once it's there, I can just smooth it over. Look at that. Oh, it's pretty. It's pretty. I like it a lot. Right, one of the cleverest pieces about this whole collection is this. And this is the well. This has been rejigged. It now has those little green pieces around it. It's super pretty. It's got that gorgeous colorway to it, very rich colors. The joy of this dye is that it is incredibly clever. Doesn't look it, looks like just a piece. But when I go to it, if I take the bottom and I start to pop it up and pull, I'll do it from the top so you can see, hopefully, I can then pull it up. Can you see how we're getting those lines? And I can twist. And when I twist, it becomes a well, a 3D well and I can raise it as high or keep it lower depending where I'm doing my score marks here. And you don't have to score it, I just like to make sure it's fully up. But it means that we can still push it down for postage. Clever, eh? All backing papers will be on the Carnation Crafts website, Alison. Please do go there and find all your backing papers. It will all be online. The perfect papers will come from collections within um, Carnation collections they what they do is when they're rejigging the colorways they always make sure that some of the perfect papers that you've got in your collections will match into these as well so uh, if anyone for carnation is watching they'll let us know uh, and so it just goes like that that is one of the cleverest things ever engineering see so these things that we've got where we got the um the magic fireplace and stuff like that those engineering points they didn't just start recently these have been going back in collections a long long way it's what sets carnation apart the chicken wire the well all of those things those engineering points that they bring to us they started a long time ago the strata card shape that we were talking about this morning which for all of you that were uh, asking was the 211035 that layered element that allows us to make layered cards those engineering points they came in a long time ago it's not a new thing so I've got this here and I will be sticking it down in a second, but I've got options. So I can leave it exactly as it is, or I can stick that down in the center and it will sit through the center of my well. It depends what I want to do. I quite like it without, but I quite like it with, so it doesn't really matter to me either way. I'm gonna be putting some elements around it anyway, uh, but it's beautiful to have and it's beautiful to see. What they have got, it's gonna be harder for you to see on the overhead because it's gonna sit upright, but they have got the fountain, which is beautiful. Now what I can do with the fountain is sit it in, tuck it down and glue it so that when you know it's received, it's upright. It's, it's all the different ways we play. When I'm doing that, what I tend to do is where I've got those pip marks, I tend to fold it and score really well, really burnish that. And I use that as the point at which I glue. So it sits. So by the time it's glued, it will sit and it will still fold down. That tends to be how I use that fountain. So we'll play with that in a second. I'm just gonna put my elements together. So coming back to this point, <clears throat> I've got my two archways. These are beautiful. Look at these for new colorways. There's that one and that one. Gorgeous, right? That, that against that green is spectacular. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of wet glue. Again, I'm not gonna do this too much. Oh, I up now, well, look at me being organized. <laughs> I was like a superhuman last night. Put these just that archway going down, 
that's placed and pushed. You could walk straight into that, couldn't you? Is that fronts? Is that, where is it? You know, you've got that, that visual point, haven't you? This one will need to be glued. So this one, I'm not gonna be able to put foam tape on here or any kind of tape because I've got the little holy bits through it at the bottom. So I can just use some glue on here. Not much, just enough to get the adhesion so that nothing squishes through. Just pushing down on either side there and allowing it to settle. <gasps> Jacqueline says, I've made this all in white, one of Carla's suggestions, then used the Christmas tree and pieced four together to make it a 3D. <gasps> And put lights on it it looks beautiful i bet it does jacqueline can you put that in the group if you if you've got photos of it jacqueline uh that would be stunning this one's beautiful in white it really is stunning in white but these colors are just i love them so when i'm working at home on this card i have a tendency to work with it in formation so I won't do that for you today because obviously you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. But I tend to work with mine. I, t what I, what I never put the well on till last. It's up to you how you craft. I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm just saying for me, this is the way I've personally found it. I wouldn't use something like this because obviously it's a glue bottle. It's going to get in my way. But I tend to put something that's a little bit heavier just on the bottom just to make sure it all stays exactly in place. And then if I was using, for instance, the peacock, which I'm going to use, I would place him where I can see him so his little feet would stand exact and I would be able to glue him that way. So I hope that makes sense. It just makes, it, I can obviously see it, you guys can't at home, but it just makes it better to piece together that way for me. You choose what you want to do, but that's just a tip when you get it home as to how I piece mine out. Oh, bad peacock. So I always do the last bit. So the well, I will always concentrate on that bit last because I can see it better to work with it in that way. Now we've got a beautiful little bench. I love this garden bench here. What I will say about this garden bench is it can also be used as a top piece for your card. I can, if you were to put it in between your layers, you can have it as an extra sort of element sitting at the top to give it a little bit more grandeur to put the same on the other side. It depends which one, where you want to play with it. I'm going to use it in its true form here, which is a bench and I'm just going to pop it between those card shapes and it bridges that bottom uh, sort of gap. I will say use some uh, vellum in here and that looks stunning really stunning when we start to use vellum on here if you piece this so you're cutting this out of the actual center piece instead of having it laid on top put vellum behind there as well and put tiny lights at the back of the card it glows through and it's stunning it's absolutely stunning vellum is going to be your best friend when making this particular card shape it really lends itself to it beautifully wet glue just on these legs I'm not going to go too far with the wet glue. I don't want it. Obviously, I don't exactly know where what is going to stick. So I will just pop a little bit just on these edges and then I will give that up just exactly where it is. Place it through to the bottom of those pieces. So I know I've got my central positioning. And that's my bench done. See how quick this comes together. I'm talking an awful lot, as you're all aware. When you're at home, you're working much quicker than this. Now, with that well i can put it on a blue background so i've got the idea of water flowing with the blue behind it but to me i lose something in it or i can put it on the purple and then it pops you see the difference how that changes so if i do it half and half you can see which one it pops on the most so it's just looking at things like that. You know, when I'm doing it, do I think that the purple's going to make it stand out more? Is the blue, it depends what you want to do. To me, the blue's more subdued and it's it's sort of sucking some of the blue out of the vignette, whereas the purple is pushing it forward. So just have a look at those different ideas. So I'm trying to give you as much as I can as to what you can play with, with these elements. So let's bring all of these in. My little flowers. Mand. I'm very new to Carnation Crafts. Got four collections and a couple of USBs. Not made anything yet because I'm unsure how to open up the free downloads. Any help? Mand. Okay, right. That has to change straight away. 
When you're on the Carnation Crafts website, you've obviously got the downloads. You're just asking you how to open them. I'm assuming manned. They'll download to your downloads folder in your computer, wherever that is. We all have different ones. Obviously, I'm on a Mac and they're different to Windows. When you've found it, my advice is to right click on those and it'll say open. And then you usually get another pull out that says open with. And it'll give you a list of things that you can open it with. I advise Adobe. Um, there are other options. I'm not saying it's the only one, but I advise open with Adobe, okay? And it will just open up the PDF. It's just a standard PDF. That's all they are. And when it opens, it might be that, if you open it in Adobe, at the top it'll say one of 56, and it means it's got 56 pages, or one of 12, and it means it's got 12 pages, whichever, you know, whatever you're looking at. And so you scroll down, and as you're scrolling down, you'll see all the images. What will happen with Carnation, which is alternative to any other company? If it says one of 12, page one may not have that black line down it, which we looked at when I was looking at these. Page one might not have that here. Page two will. It'll be the same image, but page two will have a black line. Page one won't. Page one means we're just doing standard vignettes and you're just putting your die straight on top. Page two means we are folding there and we're gluing and we're putting the die on top of that. And that's how you get those downloads. It's it's just opening it in PDF and, uh, and it will give you it. I can't show you it on my computer because my computer's not hooked up to the mainframe. Um, but it's really simple, I promise you, it's really easy. Worst case scenario, just double click on it and it should open, but it might not open in Adobe. It doesn't matter if it doesn't, it's just Adobe is set to print correctly. Um, it doesn't mean others aren't, it's just Adobe is the one that we recommend because it works that way. I hope that helps, man. Please, please, please don't not use what you've bought. If you are still struggling, it's okay. Ask us again and we can try and help you more. But please do use the stuff you've bought because because that's frustrating if, for you if you can't. So please do um, use what you can. Right, I've got these little lanterns tucked here and I'm gonna use them and I can use them on both sides. What I love about these is because they're on the backing paper, it doesn't really detract from what's underneath it but it does make it pop a little bit more. If I was to just put that lantern straight on without the green backing, because certainly on this one, where there's all the florals, the lantern's gonna disappear into it. You won't, you won't get the impact from it. Whereas this way, I can make it stand out more. What I can do is put that on foam tape, see how when we come higher, then we then get that dimension and we get a different look from it, we'll get the shadow play. Now, the reason I wouldn't necessarily do that just from my point of view is that if I do do that, it does then make it look like the backing is part of the pop-up and that makes it, it takes the reality away from it, it takes the dream away from it. So I'd be inclined to leave it flat and just let it kind of camouflage into that space. See how the two top pieces fit perfectly into that little corner element there, where my finger is, take it away. They just fit into that little place. So it's beautiful for this, it works so well. I'm unlikely to use one on both sides just because to me it's too much. So because I know I'm gonna put my peacock somewhere around here, I'm gonna use them as diagonals, just opposing pieces on that card image. And I'm just gonna use some, I'll use a bit of wet glue, but I'll just make sure I'm just doing it on the elements that I need for now. So I'm not putting this all over just in little places so that I can get some of that laid down. I'm gonna go straight into those elements where I know it matches up, just into those corners and hold. And that allows us to just place through. Uh, there's people helping everyone. I love you guys, you are the most amazing people. Carnation says we do have avail uh, instructions available on our website under the inspiration tab. Thank you, Carnation. I assume that's Harvey. Thank you, Harvey. Karen also saying about uh, Carnation Crafters Group on Facebook to help you as well. It's a great community. Carnation's never about uh, just a load of products. Carnation is a community of people. We help each other. We like to talk things through. It's lovely in there. It's a really great, helpful, strong group. Please do join it if you're not part of it already, manned. So that's those elements there. We're gonna go in with the peacock. The peacock I'm gonna shape because he is ripe for it. Got my foam mat 
and I've got my element here and then I'm going to use my ball tools. Now for this particular one, I just want to show you and I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to show you. If I'm canny with this, I can take my smallest point on the smallest ball tool and I can actually go through every single eye in his tail, just gently. And it will dome each, each one individually. Now what happens with that, I'm hoping I've done enough so that you can see it, is when I turn it over, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, the top ones, can you see the dimension we're getting? They pop out. I wish you could see that better than you can. The top ones just pop. It is, each one has got these little doming pieces and it looks incredible. Absolutely incredible. If you've got time to take the time and do that, honestly, give it a shot because they look gorgeous. What I'm then gonna do is take the, uh, it's like my mid ball tool and I use this one probably the most often. Bear in mind that the biggest, biggest is a little bit like using uh, like a, I don't know, a wrecking ball on a can of beans. You don't need it. You can use the smaller one. And I'm just going to take the outside because the outside is where my fibers need to be broken the most. Take it through there. Pull it round. Oh, look at you all close up and fancy Miss Taz. Right. Can you see how each eye is popping and you've got that dimension? So if I pull it this way, that's probably the best way of showing you. Can you see how each one's just protruding? Okay, so it gives us that extra helping hand. So around the outside here, just go through, bring it into the next section, and I'm creating up to that point, and then his little mid piece. And I'll just use it just down his neck gently, just a little bit of extra. There, that point mark here where his wing is, I don't want him to be that round. Like to me, he is way domed at that point. I don't want him to. So I've got a little point here on his, uh, just at the bottom of his body where that colorway changes. And I'm just gonna very, very gently pull that tail feather back up and then lay it back down again. Now look at the dimension on him. There he's, see how it comes to life when we do that? that just joyful, joyful moment where we're like, holy moly, look what I just did. Now, if I look at his body here and I'm gonna place him at the bottom, I know that if I go too far over, my pin flare is just gonna spill right out. I've only got that much room to put pin flare. You've got two options here. You can know where he's going and put pin flare on the bottom piece, but I like to fill the gap that I've created on here. So I'm measuring him up. I know from that green piece down to the middle, I'm fine. And so that's where my pin flare is gonna go. And I will just take that here, place it up, because I want a fair whack on. I want him to stand high, but I also know I'm fine if the top of his feathers and his body lays flat. It's the midsection that wants the height. Pop him down. Before we commit, just make sure it's in the right place. That, that pin flare's not touching anything yet because I've got that dome. So I'm okay until I've got him exactly where I want him and then I can just very gently push until I get the adhesion. I'm not squashing him, I'm just getting, I can feel it, I can feel it gripping underneath and then I leave him alone. I'm done with him, he's fine. So that's that piece done. When it comes to the plant pot, same thing, a cares, we can go around the edge of this just to shape that out. And I'm using the biggest ball tool now because I'm working on a very large surface area that is unbroken. So there's no give in the center of this. I'm gonna break my own rule uh, just to go in and I'm just, I know I've shaped it out a little bit at the edge, but I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna just show you what happens if I go in like a wrecking ball. I have got more than just pants and vest on for any of you that get that reference. But if I go in, can you see what's happening? See all the creasing? It really does not look pretty. That's not how we sculpt with paper. We're ruining the, we're ruining the weave of the paper. So instead of that, we work on the outside first. 
break your fibers first and then work your way on the inside here. Now obviously mine's creased now because of that, but I did want to show you why we don't just slam straight down in the middle because it does affect the vignette. You can see I've got creases coming. You can see that one's really bad. Uh, and so it starts to look like fabric instead of paper. It looks messy. It just doesn't have that same smoothness to it. The idea is we that we stay faithful to the vignette. We just shape it. And if I just crush it, it is just crushed on the inside. It's all about pressure, control, and where you put in your ball tool and how we break those fibers. So again, a little bit in the center here. And I'm gonna put that fairly high because I'm gonna steal it for my flowers. So the first thing I ever do is place this. So that's placed there. And then I'm gonna steal the pin flare to tuck my flowers into where I can sort of design it. So because it's pin flare, I can keep picking it up. And I can just do little tucks. So that one, I'm gonna put the flower halfway through. Then I'm good, cause I've got the yellow, I've got a hint of it. I've just got a hint that that's what's growing between. And then I'm gonna put this one with the stem, if I can get it just through. So I've now got two and I'm just stealing that pin flare for those two as I just push down. Then for the next set where I'm working up, I use wet glue to stick them behind. So I can use a little bit of wet glue on the back and the front so it sticks to the vignette in front of it. Because we're building height. And that I love these. Look at that. Isn't that just so gorgeous? And I'm just on the back here with wet glue. I'm not going on the front now because I'm not going to depend on the ones in front of it anymore for this colour. The tucking will happen, but it will be minimal because I want to just get rid of that stem at the bottom so it looks like it's still growing up, but I want it to stick to the back of that card. It's just about working your adhesive as you're going up and through. Make sure that's not going to impede on the other side, oh, yeah. the other side of that card and just make sure it's tucked because what you don't want when it comes together is to push everything. You see how it's pushing that leaf? I don't want that to happen. That's not going to make it pretty. So I'm just going to push and then I'll pull that forward to allow it to bend when the card does. So we are started to build our scene. We are building up here. We've now got this beautiful imagery. Everything is very beautiful. So the last thing I need to do is place my well. So this is, look at that. Isn't that stunning? Really easy. I'm not doing anything special here. Now, what I'm gonna do is place my well just about here. Now, I've got to show it that way so you can see it. Really, really cute. Now, for those of you who are thinking with very clever brains, if you were to put a little bit of black on the inside at the top here, you could have a little trampoline for your mice if you were making cards for Litleys, okay? So there are more than one ways to play with these things. I'm just gonna place this here for now and just put some wet glue on. I promise you the next demo that I do is much quicker than this one, but I did want to show you in the courtyard in depth because it's one of the most incredible sets that they've done. And I think it deserves the extra attention. And I'll pop that there. And just shake that through. So clever, isn't it? This whole set is so clever. There's just something about it. Now I'm gonna take my little well. I'm just gonna burnish that down because I pulled it back up. And, oh, you can't see a thing. Sorry guys. So I've got my little well here and I'm gonna place glue on that point. I've just burnished it down. That's all I'm doing. Straight across and plenty on. Very few times I will tell you to put plenty of glue on this is one of them. But what I'm doing, how well can you see? Can you see where I've got the white splodges of glue? What I do, you can do it on a um, <laughs> trampoline for mice made me laugh, but it's very cute. What I'm gonna do with this is I would normally take a clean applicator or I just get rid of the excess on my hand. I'm not saying you need to do it on your hands. I'm just gonna go through and wipe the excess off that. And then what I would do when I was at home is just wait for a second because glue gets stickier as it dries. The tackiness comes in its drying stage, not in its wet stage. So I'm gonna just push that through and I'm gonna place it at an angle 
just in the centre. Now I'm going to take my pokey and push it down just so that adhesion sets. Same at this side, I need to make sure it's touching the floor. Okay. I could do with two pokies at this point. Hold it in place until that adhesion sets. All right. Once you've done that, that will then stand up. And you've got your perfect standing well. Now, Miss Taz, am I okay to borrow the front facing so that we can see that as it's finished because the overhead's not? Look at that, guys. Super easy, super clever. Now, imagine that with some vellum behind here. Those cut in in vellum and some lights behind it. Just beautiful. Easy. Really easy to make. I obviously take a lot longer when I'm doing the demos than you would need to take at home because I, I, you know, I like to show you what I like to do with the, the shaping out. And I know it's not for everybody, but to have those options is important because, again, it's about going on the crafting journey, isn't it? It's about how we, we get more um, kind of tools in our arsenal. You know, once we've learned not to shove a ball tool straight in the middle of something that's got a big surface area like that, then we can start to learn, well, actually going down the line, I know that's not what I do now. I can shape it out gently on the edges, make sure it's not creasing and work my way to the inside because those fibers are breaking. Those little things, they do matter. It matters to the finished piece. It matters, you know, to, to the visual. So when we look at something like Janine's card that was made with the Strata, um <laughs> that we've got here janine's super clever a lot of things but one of the things that we can notice when we're looking at this uh, is that we've got these little flowers here and they're all shaped when we're looking at the trees they're all shaped janine's gone into all of these and shaped them out so when we look at janine's and we can sit there and go god you know that is incredible and it is incredible there's no getting around that but she's taken the time just to shape stuff and it does matter, you know, they do make a difference, those things. So if you've got the patience and the time to just have a go with a little ball tool and just see if you can break those fibers, the ball tool, you can get the ball tools on the website. If you, and if you do go, can I just say it as well? I don't think it'll work for the deal of the day today um, to be completely open. But if you do go and start buying things like your pro print and your ball tools and those things from the Carnation Crafts website, um, please do make sure you've signed up to the newsletter and you've got 10% discount off it because it will give you 10% off. So even things like ball tools, glues, applicators, those that's when you use your 10% more than anything else because it's they're, they're the essentials, they're our crafting tools. Right, let's have a look at this. Which one do I want to do? We'll do this one. We might only have time for one more. This one will be much quicker. I just wanted to take the time with the first one, kind of hold your hands through that process so that we can see how it's coming together. So let's have a look at all the bits and bats that I've got here and how we're going to work these. That's all my vignettes. New to card making, brand new to card making, cut yourself two shapes, either a base card if you've got it from the carnation, card shapes, if there's not a card shape, just cut yourself two squares, two rectangles, whatever you fancy working on. Um, this is a, a seven by five, it depends what you want to work with, it, it's absolutely fine whichever we go. We make a score line, half an inch across the top of one of those pieces and place red liner tape at the top. Why do we use red liner tape over finger lift tape? Why do we use red liner tape over wet glue? Well, we use red liner in this process because it's the strongest adhesive you can get as far as crafting is concerned. And the reason we use that is because it's holding the back to the front of the card. If you've got weight on the front of the card, which we have, it causes a stress on the adhesion line because it's pulling it. If you've got any adhesion that won't necessarily continue to stick over a period of time if that degrades and all the weight is sitting on the front of the card where we've placed all of our elements the two will separate so we use the strongest adhesion we can possibly get we shuffle them together butt them up against something and just place that down so that you've got your card base all sorted that adhesion is going nowhere 
instantly. If I try and separate those two now, I'm going to tear it. That adhesion is the strongest adhesion you can get. The same goes when we're doing our mats and layers. Why would I not use wet glue on my mat and layer? For me personally, I'm never going to use a wet glue to hold down my mat and layer. The reason being is, over time, if this starts to bend, wet glue will give. It, PVA just gives, it does, you know, it goes brittle over time. So I always use foam tape. So I'm just going to take these off. You don't need to take everything off. You just need two lines of adhesion, but you do need to support the rest of the card so that the weight of the vignettes that we're putting on and the glue is going to be held. And then I'm just going to place this down best I can on the overhead. I love that colour. It's like um, grass. And then I'm going to go in with a paler colour. So we're just toning out all the time. I can work with that colour, but if I work with that colour and I place this on top, I'm going to lose that. Uh, just to let you know, Taz, I just lost my monitor. I don't know what happened there. Uh, if I place that, I'm going to just lose a little bit of that colour. It's not going to pop quite so much. If I put this on, see how we're losing that. My monitor is playing all kinds of nonsense right now. It keeps going away and coming back again. There we go. Can you see the difference how this pops more? Just that lighter tone. Take this off. Oh look, it came straight off. And I always base that down to the bottom of this so I know that that's straight. And then I know that I can roughly get these straight. We get better and better sort of at eyeballing stuff, don't we, as we craft more, she says, as she's got it on a wiggly point at the bottom. Um, Shirley says, hi, Colin Taz. Is the offer on all day? Carnation Craft says, hi, Shirley. Yes, it is. So you'll be able to get that 20, 21 pound discount uh, until later today, but it will go back up to 26 pounds. Uh, and rightly so, it takes a huge amount of work to get these all recolored from their originals but they do give us the offer to the chance to get it cheaper while we can so it's sitting there on the deal of the day on the carnation crafts website which is www.carnationcrafts.co.uk the number if you want to type the number in you can just go to deal of the day but you can go into um the main thing and just uh type in the number which for today i've lost it is two 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 zero two something it's it's you've got your screen there sorry Taz I'm not helping on that matter so going back to this demo and how we're going to bring all of this together and how we're going to make the card base what we want to look at is what is going to be your showstopper and this is the way I always start and I work backwards which bit do I want to be the most prominent on the card and I've got two larger pieces here so the two biggest pieces that I've got uh, that would be showstoppers or could be showstoppers would be the dog and the post box which one do I want to have as the most prominent on my card visually that doesn't mean to say just centrally it just means visually where do, where do I want my visuals to be for me I want it to be on the post box for this particular one I love the little dog but I want it to be on my post box now what I'm going to say for me on this is I'm just going to chop his little hat off not because I don't love the hat but because I want it to be this that I'm looking at I don't want my red competing so I'm just going to take this off. If I wasn't using the post box, then I would be keeping it. So I've now taken that away and I'm not competing with the red of the post box anymore as I was when he had his hat on. I hope that makes sense, but it's just about pulling colour where you need to. So I'm going to take my foam mat again and I've got my foliage and I'm going to take a ball tool. Now, don't come in like a wrecking ball, she says, but this has got cut lines all the way through it. So my fibers are already broken. I don't need to worry about the crease happening as much as I do on something that's just a plain surface area. So I can start working through with that bigger ball tool, which has a little more impact. So you're going around here, pushing down, working around just those edges. And then as I go through, working in a circular motion through the center gives me that beautiful lift what I can do normally I tell you to pull it back that way and I will but I'm also just going to push it further along the horizontal shape with my fingers see how look at that popping out can you see that beautiful beautiful dimension and they just start to pop open and I'm going to use that as 
a larger resource and it's going to be my grounding device. It's just a visual. It's just a visual. Now before I do that, what I want to have hidden behind or tucked behind is my gate. Look at that. If that's not impact, I don't know what is. How stunning is that? Beautiful colorways. This colorway is incredible. I was so excited when I saw it. I love vivid color. Now, very tiny amounts here. This is where your applicators are needed because we're using such small amounts in such small areas. Just to make sure we have that tuck line little bits in those corners. Now I can go to town on these, but I'm not going to. I'll just put it on a few. I don't mind them lifting a little bit. I don't mind the shadow play. Now, I'm just gonna discover where my grass lies if I'm using it at the bottom because I want this to sit up. If I put it straight at the bottom, I'm gonna lose half of it behind the foliage and I don't want that to happen. So I'll go to around about there. I'm happy with that. Place down. It's what? Prices for collection? Say, on the website. Look at the press they just <gasps> Have they done it with everything that's on the show? No, so what they've done is they've done it for the collection. Yeah, so. so 62.99 for, for just in the courtyard by. and for just passing by yeah. are both in their 60s. Yeah, for just passing by is 62.99. Have they the just court, changed that? Or has it been on a morning? That's incredible. For the deal of the day. That is incredible. Thanks, Carnation. Right, I've got that there. I know this is going to be placed here, but what I want to do is get this situated because I want my foliage to go over the top. So the first thing I start doing is planning backwards. I know that needs to go in and I know this is going to go on top. So I work backwards all the time. Where do I want what and how am I going to situate it? So I know that's the case. I also know I want my little dog to be here, thereabouts. Now, when I'm working with the dog, I've got an issue, which is his tail. So I can make two options. Do I leave him on this side so his tail is hanging off, which is not a problem to me. I quite like over the edge and things hanging about. Or do I lay him over this side and have him just tucked behind, which is what I want to do. Now, because I am using foam tape on the back of this, if I place this down first and stick it, I can't stick him behind without cutting half of his bottom off, which I don't want to do. So we have to, this is what I mean about working backwards all the time. I know I need to get him stuck down before I stick that down because otherwise I'm stuck. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna shape out on here now is the dog very quickly, I won't, keep going over shaping with you but I do want the impact of it so I'm just going to go around the edge and his head and his lug I'm not worrying too much about his bum he's going to be tucked in so I don't need to worry about that but I do need to just break down this on his body just to get a little bit of dome in so I can get a little bit of shape in him so pull his head forward so that I get that difference between the body and the head once he's been shaped bring this back and then we start to fill this. It makes a difference how much um, pin flare we use as to what effect we get, just so you know. Play with your pin flare and just learn your amounts. Can you see how we've got that shaping? It's very difficult for you to see on overhead because you're just seeing what looks like a flat image, but you can see the shadows just are into his body here. Then now I can go in with this. And I can make the shape. The reason I don't have that straight the way up is because that is see-through underneath, as you can see as we go through. So if I'd had the foam over, you'd see it from the front. Take it top to bottom, hold it, place it down, just about there, and there. Already we're starting, look at that. Do you see why I chose that as my showstopper? Um, Linda says, I thought we were going to cut off his tail. I would never cut off his tail. Uh, but I don't, it wasn't as comfortable to me. I love things overhanging on a card. I've never had a problem with that. I think it's a really lovely addition to a card. But it has to be, it has to have a reason for it to do that. Otherwise, it's just something that, it. Would, otherwise it looks like we just didn't fit it on. So if there's a reason for it, I'm all for it. If it looks like I've 
I've just kind of made a mistake, then I'm not quite so comfortable with it. So that's why in this case, I want him at this side so that it hasn't got that kind of weird edge. Anyway, there we go, we've got that here. Then I'm gonna go in with my pin flare on this point and then fill that as much as I can. I'm most interested in getting that top element stuck. Hey, oh, good Lord. So I need the adhesion here because I need it to adhere to this. I'm more interested in this adhering to this than I am in the bottom adhering to the card. That's my point of contact. So that's where I want it to be the most. The rest will fall into place because I still want it to have height. So I can take that and just push that through and place it on. See, pretty, pretty, pretty. Now, I'm just gonna be really annoying and try and fill up my pin flare a little more because that looks like it's having a moment to me, which is gonna be no good for the demos. Oh, is that better? Oh, I did it. The thing is when I fill pin flare, it's pretty much guaranteed that my fingernails pop off. So I'd rather not do it while I'm doing demo, if I'm honest. Right. You'll all be really pleased to know while I'm just shaping this out, my very exciting news is I've now got 10 fingernails of my own. I own 10 of my own fingernails. They've grown back, they're just not quite ready, but I reckon in about four months, I'll be able to have proper fingernails without anything ridiculous on top of them. Thanks for listening. <laughs> That's my problems. Extra little bit of decoupage, just to give it that point of difference. See how we build? It's pretty. Now. I've got this one, I'm not gonna use this, but I just want to show you it. I've got this sitting here, and I can use it as a lovely little corner element to my card. I, I might use it, but it's, it's sweet. It's very cute. What I wouldn't do is build it onto this, because now I'm taking away from everything. So it's really sweet as a corner panel, really cute. And that I would overhang. I've got no problem with that. Do you see why? Because there's a reason. His little tail, there was no real reason. When it's a corner element, it looks so sweet and so pretty. It's just finding the, the reasoning behind it. So these I'm gonna pull in. I'm gonna use the foliage pieces that already exist in order to give me the tuck in. So it's not coming randomly out of nowhere. So I just put a little bit of pin flare on these, not much, just a tad. Place it through. I just want it to sit slightly up. A little bit of shadow. I'm not going for the, the ridiculous, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna tuck in these floral panels as well. When I tuck these in, I need the end point to disappear behind something else. So this little piece at the, t you know, the stem, I need it to disappear, otherwise the stem's growing out of midair. So it's always just thinking about your placement. Wet glue for this one. Took that end point behind there so it can't be seen. It still looks like it's growing, but it's not growing out of nowhere. Pretty edging, you see? Really sweet. So the next thing, obviously, is this chap. It does look like Miss Phyllis. It does look like Miss Phil Phil. So we'll just push that through. I do apologize if, if you can hear my tummy rumbling. It's very close to the microphone. Just his little bottom. Straight through and his little head, or hers. There's a cut line here, it's little cut lines. Use that, push the body back. They're always placed there purposefully for us, just so we can get that shape in. Pin flare on that side, pin flare on this. And make sure you've got some at the bottom because we want it to sit over the edge of that post box. Bring his tail forward and seat him. He is so cheeky. How cute is that? Now what I could have done, which I think would be even sweeter, if I take him off and took his tail in because now he's really naughty and he's stopping everybody from using the phone box. So now what I need to do is just look at that and say, am I finished with it? Do I like it exactly as it is? Or do I just 
want to just slightly adjust my height definition. The cat's here at the top. That's giving me my height. I've got white space here and I've got white space here. And this is higher than this. This side is much higher. So what I can do then, and this is where cornering comes in so much with a card, I can choose, do I want to corner that out? So the thing that I would do here is that. And I would decide, do I want to corner it or don't I? Now my answer for me personally is no, I don't want to corner it. And the reason being is, the cat's ears are sort of obviously sitting there and to me there's too much going on. If I place it at the other side and I corner that element out, there's too much here and not enough here. I've, I've messed my balance up completely. So what I'm going to rely on is the fact that beautifully it's still symmetrical because we've used that pillar down the centre of the card and that's where your eye line is. And that to me is absolutely perfect. When you've got white space, don't feel that you have to fill it. It's a really, it's a really common thing that we do as crafters. I need to just fill that space because it's white space and, and I need to put something, oh, I'll just put a sentiment on. Oh, I'll just do, so sometimes less is more. I'm okay with it because I've filled the middle. I've created the balance already. So it's just about those elements that we're looking at. Never feel, especially with carnation, because the artwork is so strong never feel that you have to fill every inch of the card. You don't need to. White space is incredibly powerful. It's as much a part of the decoration of the card as the card is itself with everything we've put on it. Just give the eye a breathing space and it just allows it to be perfect. So we've done those two demos. I'm gonna uh, obviously let you go because I've kept you for an awful long time today. Uh, and I do apologize. The main thing for me was to just make sure you'd seen in the courtyard and that that which is such a powerful card base is so powerful and i just wanted to make sure that you'd had a really good look and a full tutorial on how to use in the courtyard because i think it's one of those cards that's just going to take you further and further as you're crafting and i never want you to forget how powerful the collections are that you have in your collections because man alive as we go back through these the strata uh, the chicken white, like I say, all those engineering points, cars like this, which are so easy to make. They're beautiful. So, uh, it would be nice to have snow on top of the post box for a Christmas card. And that, you know, the thing is, Jane, if you want to do that, the easiest way you can achieve that is cut the die of the post box in white. Cut it in red in the vignette, cut the vignette of it, then cut the same one out in white, chop the top off and piece match. So you would have the top bit white. You just take the top element off, put it on top, you've got snow. Those little tri t tips and tricks because carnation give us cut lines. So where that cut line is, we already know where to snip and it will give us the perfect white top to that red pillar box. So you're absolutely right, it'll look amazing. So I hope all of that gives you some kind of focus on where you can go with these. I'd love to see the cards you make. I do go into the group a lot and I do look through. I am away for a week now and I won't be back uh, until November, I think. Is it the 4th of November? Something new. 4th of November with something new. I've got to go and get all of my property from a, a house in Yorkshire. So I've got to go and do that next week. Um, and I'll be back the week after. But I will still keep popping in the group to have a look at what you do because I think it's incredible. Um, and yeah, and I hope today helped. So thank you so much for your company. It does mean an awful lot to me and to Miss Taz. And we will speak to you really soon. Take care till then.